Welcome to the Fit Dad Nation podcast, forging strong fathers and raising a stronger generation. It's time to get up or shut up with your host, Steve Roy. Hey guys, Steve Roy here, host of the Fit Dad Nation podcast. Welcome to the show. Thanks for listening. So uh, I'm putting this show out on March 29th, and I'm going to be sharing a couple things today, one of which is we're going to be starting a brand new challenge in the Fit Dad Nation Inner Circle, which is our private member program, and we're going to be starting that on April 1st, so just a couple days away. On Thursday, we're kicking it off. It's actually a two-part challenge, 30 days in 30 days, and so what I'm going to do today is is I'm going to share a couple of personal experiences in my experience with um shedding some body fat, getting ready for a particular event. In this case, it was a challenge, but I'm going to share a quick story here. So uh, I have a free group, uh, a Facebook group called the Fit Dad Base Camp. Last week, I posted something kind of as a joke, but also sharing some thoughts on, all right, guys, we have two months basically until it's beach season, pool season. And I know a lot of guys aren't happy with how they look with their shirt off, right? It's pretty normal, right? Especially with COVID, with with the winter just uh, passing. So a lot of guys, including me, have put on some extra weight, extra fat. And so I said, listen, guys, here's what I'm doing. I'm going to be doing this myself because I'm just not happy with my body. I'm 200 pounds. I don't feel great at 200 pounds. I'm about six feet tall, but I carry um, my weight a little bit in a different spot. It's, it's, it's not great when I'm at 200 pounds personally. I'm better at 180. So my goal is to lose 20 pounds by June 1st. And so I said that I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to put together a challenge to help those of you that want to lose 10 to 20 pounds come June 1st. So at least you feel better about yourself when you take your shirt off or you'll have a little more confidence, those things. And I said, you know, just be clear that you know, there's no way that if you've neglected yourself for a long time that you can do anything in two months to get you into beach, ready shape, jack shape, six-pack abs, lean, all that stuff, right? It takes time, a lot of time to really strip out body fat the right way, add lean muscle tissue. There's a lot of things that go into it. And yes, it takes a lot longer, but you certainly can lose 10 to 20 pounds, mostly of fat, just by covering some basics. And so the challenge I put it together, and I, and I said as a joke, I'm going to call it Operation Fat Ass. And believe it or not, uh, I had a lot of guys reach out to me and said, Steve, I, I have to do this. I need to do this. I'm a fat ass. I have to do this. So I just kind of went with it. So that's what we're doing. So we're going to call it Operation Fat Ass. And so the whole premise is let's drop 10 to 20 pounds by June 1st. And I am going to be doing this with you guys because I want to lose 20 pounds. So it's going to be uh, you know, simple. If you know anything about me, my business, what I teach, what I talk about all the time, I don't believe at all in quick fixes, trying to shortcut anything, taking supplements to try to uh, get an edge. I'm just a big believer in the simple basics of good health and fitness. I mean, that's really what I'm all about. I've said this a thousand times. It's just not sexy. It's not flashy. But just in my opinion, it just it just works the best. Just be smart about the things you're doing in your life, what you're putting into your body, how you're moving, how often you're moving, and your body will reward you. But so there's two parts of this today. One is if you're interested in joining the challenge, so you have a couple of days to think about it. It's happening inside our private program called the Fit Dad Nation Inner Circle. So you can find out more about the whole program itself this challenge is one small piece of what we have going on in the inner circle as a private community. There's a ton of resources in there, all kinds of programs, workouts, challenges, videos, tutorials, um, just all kinds of resources that I've put together over the years to make this really uh, uh, just a phenomenal resource for dads trying to get back into shape and stay there. So that's at fdnic.com. You can join the program there. And just so you know, <clears throat> there this it's a month-to-month program. So if you decide you want to do the program, the first part of this program for 30 days and bail out, that's okay. There's no contracts. There's no obligations to stick around. Of course, love to have you part of the community. But I understand some guys are like, I, I want to be part of this. I want to do this short term. I need a, a quick boost. I need a jump start. Please help me. You're free to join. Um, for 30 days or 60 days. Okay, it's going to cost you 67 bucks per month. So if you want to do a 30-day challenge, it's going to cost you 67 bucks, which is 
nothing. It's literally nothing. I mean, it's a drop in the it's a drop in the bucket, especially to get the kind of coaching and guidance and um, accountability that's going to come with this challenge. So, if you're interested in that, you can certainly hit me up on social anywhere, DM me, hit me up with an email, stevenfit.nation.com, or just join up for the program, sign up for a month or two, whatever whatever works for you, and then um, you be part of the challenge. If you're not interested in that, that's okay too. I'm going to be talking about my experiences today on how I lost uh, just about 20 pounds. I did this last August. So uh, I'm going to share what I did, exactly what I did, in hopes that regardless of what you do, whether you do my challenge, whether you do something else, whether whatever it is, doesn't matter. If you follow this advice, you will lose weight and probably a good 10 to 20 pounds. So here's what I did. So I went into August, uh, last August, with a goal, 20 pounds in one month. Now, I'll just say straight up, that's not something that I would advise anybody to do. That's just that's too much weight to lose in a month. Unless you're morbidly obese, sure, you can lose that much. But uh, for most guys that are carrying 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 extra pounds, 20 pounds is a lot. You're not going to lose 20 pounds of fat in a month, period. You know, And I wasn't expecting to do that either. Mine was a personal goal of really cleaning up my lifestyle, diet, and training and try to make just the most efficient because I just had it in my mind and I know that over the years, because I've been doing this for a long time, uh, that I know I can lose a lot of weight quickly. You know, Unfortunately, now that I'm almost 50, I can gain a lot of weight pretty quickly too, which has happened more and more often. As soon as I take my foot off the gas, weight starts creeping back. Don't like it, so it's a constant struggle, but you know, it's just comes with the territory of, of aging. So anyway, here's what I did. So <clears throat> I went into the month absolutely committed. That's number one. If you're not 100% committed to making it happen, you will, you're will. you not going to make it. Just I can tell you straight up because there's just too many things that are going to get in your way. There's too many lifestyle factors, too many opportunities to make a bad decision, which will lead to more bad decisions. It's just That's just how it's going to go. So I went in saying... I don't care what comes across my plate, and I have a wicked sweet tooth for like uh, chocolate pop tarts, uh, 100 grand bars, uh, blueberry muffins, uh, red vines, licorice, Snickers bars, like those things I could eat all day long. So I have to, you know, but I said, listen, told myself, and I committed to my family, my girls, I said, I'm done. I, I uh, absolutely 100% committed to this challenge myself, and I'm going to lose 20 pounds. And so the first thing I did was I I cut out all the junk that I already that, I mean that's an obvious one of course but those few chips those few pretzels those few bites of rolls or bread a couple bites of pasta here and there that shit adds up quickly easily add on 3 4 5 600 calories to your day and you can easily pop you up into a calorie surplus which as you know we're not going to lose any weight when we're in a surplus. So I got rid of all that stuff. Didn't even look at it. Didn't even consider it. Uh, I just put it out of my mind and I said, this is what I'm eating. And I focused and I went shopping and I just bought a bunch of you know fruits and vegetables. No problems with that. I bought a bunch of dairy, uh, like uh, cottage cheese uh, and some Greek yogurt and then just a ton of protein. So, I mean, I eat tons of eggs, organic uh, or grass-fed ground beef. I was eating uh, grass-fed steaks. Uh, chicken, turkey, all that stuff, tuna fish. And so that was number one was cutting out like the morning cereal, the morning bagel. I was having an occasional soda, um, the extra calories like that. As soon as I cut that out and I really focused on eating just really high quality one ingredient foods, uh, my, the scale started moving immediately. So honestly, guys, I mean, and obviously this is nothing that you haven't heard before, but if you just give it one week, for example, of just eating lean meats, eggs, fish, fruits, vegetables, oils, nuts, avocados, you know, healthy fats are fine. There's nothing wrong with plenty of fat in your diet. Keeping your carbs on the low side. And, you know, I'm not necessarily preaching a low carb diet, but I will tell you that once you reduce your carbohydrates, typically you're going to lose weight. Obviously, the, the the main reason is once you cut out those heavy, starchy, processed carbs that fill most of our diets, you're cutting out a big chunk of your calories. So yes, you're going to be down in that deficit. Okay, but you know, not having those carbs and focusing more on lean proteins are going to keep you full for longer, right? We you know protein's the most satiating um, a macronutrient. 
you keep eating carbs, it's going to keep making you hungrier and hungrier. It's going to have that trigger, especially if you're having sugary type stuff, and you're going to want more and more, and it tends to lead to overeating. So I focused really on a ton of protein. I was eating uh, probably 160, 170 grams a day. Again, it's 200, pound, um, 200 pounds. Kept my carbs just strictly coming from a little bit of dairy that I was eating and then fruits and vegetables. And it's hard to overeat carbohydrates from fruits and vegetables unless you're just sucking down bananas, watermelons, uh, or high sugar fruits, uh, which aren't bad, uh, just have a little more calories. It's very hard to overeat. So if you focus mostly on vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, fibrous vegetables, very hard to overeat. You're not going to get a lot of calories. You're not going to get a lot of carbohydrates, but you're going to get a ton of nutrients. So you know, one of the biggest benefits from adopting that for me was I was just, I wasn't that hungry anymore. Literally my, my appetite, because my carbs were low and I wasn't eating any junk at all, my appetite went way down quickly. And of course, when you're not constantly thinking you're hungry, right? Physical hunger is different than actual hunger uh, or emotional hunger, which a lot of us just have this uh, trigger or it's just a habit. We're not really physically hungry. Okay. We just think we are. That once that went, went away, I started, I started eating less and yeah, the, the scale started moving. I started using intermittent fasting. I was just on a, a very um, un, non-aggressive 16-8 schedule, meaning I was eating all of my meals in an eight-hour window. 11 to 7 was mine, 11 in the morning to 7 at night. Not That's not aggressive at all, but it limits a few things. One, for me and for most guys, a lot of guys that I've spoken to even recently, is once they get past dinner, and you're you know you're winding down for the night or you're watching television or you're doing something with your family the tendency is to grab something sweet or salty or something some kind of comfort food and that typically happens at night and there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with eating at night there's nothing wrong with eating at 11 o'clock at night calories a calorie it's not necessarily going to just sit there and be stored as fat because you ate it at a certain time of day the problem is is people tend to eat foods that have no nutritional value but high in calories late at night and they eat too much of it because it's very hard to eat, you know, seven potato chips and dip, right? I'll eat a whole freaking bag of uh, uh, like Tostitos with dip. I mean, I could sit there and literally eat probably half a bag and you look at the calories, you just realize you had, you know, 650 calories in 15 minutes and you're like, oh shit, and your, your whole day is, you know, as far as your calories are concerned, wiped out, you're just wiped out your deficit. So... That's what I did. So I adopted the intermittent fasting schedule. Okay. Really cleaned up the diet. And then I focused on my movement. So I was training, you know, normal. You know, I was probably training four to five days a week. You know, typically my workouts are about 40 minutes for strength training, about 20 minutes for um, hit conditioning work. But I just really said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to double time this. So in addition to really cleaning up my diet, I'm going to just add more exercise. So I still, I stick with, uh, four days of strength training. So I like to do an upper lower split. There's really no right way to do this. Uh, you can do it however you want. A lot of times people like to do full body. I like to go upper lower, upper lower for myself anyway. Train hard, train heavy, a lot of heavy lifts, right? Um, again, remember, strength is relative, so it doesn't matter how much weight you lift. If it's heavy for you, that's fine. I was doing pull-ups, pressing, squats, deadlifting, carries, that kind of stuff. That was my focus. But every single day, in addition to that, was some kind of conditioning work. Just to burn more calories, I wanted to you know, get that metabolism up a little bit um, and just really work those muscles. And so that's what I did. So 20 minutes to 30 minutes, depending. Some kind of conditioning work, some kind of circuit training, AMRAP, whatever it was. I mean, there's a million ways to slice those types of workouts. You know, we've got tons of them in the inner circle that um, that I've I've recorded for for people to watch and follow along with. Um, but every day, so it was basically a two a day, you know. And as if you've ever followed uh, this the seventy five hard challenge, which I've done uh, in the past, uh, it's a two a day program just like that. Um, so anyway, that's what I was doing every day. And in addition, I, you know, I was doing regular walks. Some days it would be a walk. Some day it would be a hike. Some days we jump on the bike and hit the trail, see no canal and ride for a couple of hours, but it was always a two a day. I replaced everything that I was drinking with water, which was a huge one. It just, it just, for me, anything non, like um, if I have a soda, it just, it's a trigger for so much other shit. I mean, not only do I feel worse, I mean, I, I love the taste of soda, but drinking it, I just feel worse. I mean, it's just, it's just, as you know, it's just 
garbage. I mean, it's absolutely one of the worst things you can put in your body. Every now and then, I like to have Dr. Pepper or Coke, but I said zero. Zero, I'm not going to drink anything else other than water. And then I slept eight hours a night, which, again, I was struggling with sleep. Uh, I was up, I was really staying up late a lot, really a lot. Um, going to bed 11, 12, getting up early some days for training, whatever. And I just, I put the phone away early. I started reading more. Uh, you know, uh, I've always had a, a pretty good um, environment as far as the bedroom is concerned. Blackout shades, two, actually we have two two ground fans and a ceiling fan uh, and we keep the house cold. And so it is pretty ideal. So, but I really focused on getting enough sleep for recovery to help, you know, help this process along. So that was the focus, I mean, again, did you hear me talk about creatine? Did you hear me talk about post-workouts or BCAAs? Uh, I didn't do anything like that. I just really focused, again, I focused on my quality of the food, the quantity of my calories. I just manipulated my macros quite a bit. So I'd have to look at it, but it was somewhere like 40% protein, 40% fat, 20% carbohydrates. And sometimes I dipped a little bit low, like 15% carbohydrate. Okay. No need to go zero carbs. That's very hard, very hard to sustain. And I don't, I wouldn't want to do that anyway, because I love fruits and vegetables too much, mostly fruits. Um, so did that. Uh, I moved more. I, I uh, was doing two days, replaced everything that I was drinking uh, with water, and then I focused on my sleep. And in, t- I want to say 24, the first 24 days of August, I lost 17 and a half pounds. Um, so, I mean, I was well on my way. I had another week or so to lose the, the rest. And for those of you that have been listening to my show for a while, I shared this on the show shortly after it happened. But during that time, uh, we were on, uh, we were on our boat. Uh, I was standing there fishing and all of a sudden just everything started spinning and it wasn't particularly hot. You know, we weren't even moving at the time. And just like things started spinning, so I almost fell off the boat. And, and uh, um, my girlfriend's like, "Dude, what's wrong with you?" I said, "I don't know. I just I feel weird." So I like let me sit down. So I sat down, and within like five minutes, like everything's spinning. So I laid down on the boat. She's like, "You know, are you okay?" And I ended up, you know, face down on the boat for like an hour and a half, trying to just figure out what the hell was wrong with me. Like, am I having a stroke? Like. I don't get seasick, so I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea what it was. So it didn't go away, and finally she had to call the whatever on the water, the police people on the water that came and basically said, all right, you need help. Okay, follow me. So she drove the boat into the dock, and, of course, there's I can't see anything because I'm face down. I can't even open my eyes because if I do, uh, it's awful. I mean, everything is spinning so bad that I feel tremendously sick. And so I hear all this commotion. They're making people move their boats out of the ramp area. I'm sure people are pissed as shit thinking I was some drunk idiot. But, you know, I wasn't – I hadn't been drinking at all. And so I can hear the ambulance. And so these the, – you know, I feel someone grab me and basically these two paramedics pull me off the boat, throw me in a wheelchair, drag – you know, push me up into the, uh, the loading area, into their waiting ambulance where they run tests on me for an hour – uh, figure out, you know, there's nothing wrong with you. We don't see anything wrong with you. So, you know, it's, it's a longer story than that. You know, ultimately I ended up in the ER and, and it was about a nine or 10 hour ordeal. They still couldn't tell me what was wrong, but they ruled out a stroke and said, you know, most likely it was some kind of crazy acute inner ear infection that caused this crazy vertigo that, you know, whatever. That, that was all, I, you know, to, to, to this point even, that's all they've been able to tell me after seeing multiple probably four or five different people about this particular issue. No one had an answer for me. So, you know, we're going to leave it at that and it hasn't happened again, but that, that ended my challenge. You know, I, uh, I was a mess, uh, for a while after that too. Like I was, it took me probably, man, at least, at least a week, if not more to really fully recover from that. Cause I had felt so lousy and I still was a little bit off and my equilibrium was off. It was crazy. So, that ended that, but I have no doubt that I would have ended up losing at least 20 pounds on that. So again, I'm not, I'm not saying go out and try to lose 20 pounds in a month. It's, it's unrealistic and probably not healthy for most people. I was doing a personal test, but you know, again, what I'm sharing for, with you today is just these few things because whether or not you do the challenge with us, you can just adopt these things that I just said. Again, 
nothing that you don't already know, but you're not doing them. That's a problem, right? You're not doing them. Do all the things I just told you, and there's what, six or seven things. It's all you have to do. So basic, guys. So simple. Just literally commit to it. Commit to 30 days, whether you do it on your own, in your own house, whatever. I'd love for you to join us. Um, but seriously, commit to these things. And I promise you, if you do those things and you do them correctly, okay, without cheating, without lying to yourself, uh, without blowing yourself up on the weekends or drinking your calories with booze on the weekends saying, well, I've been doing so great during the week. I'm just going to have a couple beers. Right, just commit to thirty days. You can go. You can go thirty days without beer. You can go thirty days without alcohol or any alcohol. You can go thirty days without McDonald's, your breakfast burrito, your mocha frappuccino. You can go thirty days without any of that stuff and just try it. Okay, I tell you, it's a it's a great feeling going from a certain weight to a certain weight and feeling the difference as that weight comes off. And then when you you know one day you wake up and you look in the mirror before you get in the shower and you're like, damn, what happened? Man, I look pretty good. I haven't looked this good in 25 years. I've heard that stuff a lot. I've felt that way myself personally many times as I've gone up and down through different periods of my life with weight gain and weight loss. Um, but it's it's a phenomenal thing. So guys, again, if you want to join this challenge, you want to be part of this, again, no commitment other than you know the 30 days or the 60 days. Again, this is a, the things I just talked about are the things we're going to be focusing on in this challenge. Okay, there's no there's no secret uh, hacks here. Okay. We're going to have an accountability sh sheet for us, so we're checking in every day so we know you're doing the work, okay? We're going to have a bunch of guys doing this with you. We're all going through the same stuff. I'm going to be leading it from the front because I am doing this challenge with you guys because I honestly need to clean my shit up. I need to clean my shit up, and I want to help you guys do the same thing. I've done this a million times. I know how to do it. It will work, so join me fdnic.com is the site where you can um, register for the challenge, register for the program. I'll talk to you next week. Thanks for joining us. And remember, if you want more information, check out the Fit Dad Basecamp group on Facebook. And don't forget to stop by fitdadnation.com. Until next time, keep kicking ass and taking the next step. You can do this, Dad.